It's that time again, my friends. It's Friday, and that means Friday feelings on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Another draft on air so we can break down, analyze, and predict everything for your upcoming drafts. On today's episode, my friends, thank you for being here. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? And thank you so, so much for tuning in to Friday's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip. Today, we're doing another mock draft. We did a live on-air mock draft a couple episodes ago, and we're breaking it down today from a different angle. I'm up first in today's draft, selecting from the top spot. We're going to take a look at what you should be doing. I hope I don't fumble this ball because I can feel Steele's <laughs> eyes on me. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. And I got to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online, where the game starts. It's time for Mock Draft 2.0 on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a minute and 50 seconds until this mock draft begins once again. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed our first mock draft. Mock draft. If you haven't checked it out, please go to our YouTube channel or any podcast platform. Go check out that episode as well if you want some insight and some help into some mock drafts. This is round two of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast mock draft. Flip, I'm excited. We're changing things up here a little bit. Uh, you've got the first overall pick. I've got the fifth overall pick. It's a little different from, you know, our first ever one where you had the ninth pick, I had the tenth pick, or vice yep. versa. Um, you know, you, you, you made a little hit right there towards me before we jumped on here about who you're taking with the first overall pick. I'm yep. hoping, I'm hoping it's the right guy. Look. I took a little bit of heat because, you know, and I really want to say I appreciate all of the feedback and when people come in the DMs, the comments yes. and otherwise and talk hockey because this is a subjective situation. But when it comes to taking first overall in any format, I understand Leon Dreisaitl gets that dual position eligibility center and left wing. This league we are in goals, assists, plus minus, power play points, shots on goal and hits. Same setup as the previous mock draft. We said positionally two centers, two left wing, two right wing, four D and two goalies. You have to go with Connor McDavid Steele. I said it yes. in the comments. I said it on YouTube. I'm going to continue to say it. Connor McDavid is the best player in the NHL. I know you like to get on that Austin Matthews train when he's scoring goals. And I'm here for that conversation sometimes. But Connor McDavid is the best player in the NHL. And he is the best player fantasy option regardless of format he should be the first overall draft pick and that who is who i am taking for sure with this first overall pick most definitely he's going in the bank flip on the clock selecting Connor mcdavid first overall what a Have shocker to. here um Have to. look i've got the fifth overall pick mcdavid dry settle matthews obviously mckinnon's gonna be gone next so Most likely. uh it's really up to my decision whether i want to take a defenseman first or if i want to go back to kareel kaprizov which who i who i took in the first mock draft we did earlier yeah. this week uh it looks like this nathan McKinnon go with kale mccarr though i love a top defenseman i've already talked about taking a top defenseman in, in the first two rounds and yes. kale mccarr is just that guy i gotta draft him he's gonna put up upwards of 80 85 points I think that move right there, Kale McCarr, we understand how good he was last year. And there is no Vasilevsky issue. at six. Sorry to cut you off, but Vasilevsky okay. at six. Vasilevsky at six is too high here. It's just yes. it's just a little bit too high when you still have Kaprizov on the board. You do also have an interesting name in Miko Rantanen on the board who's going to get so many points and has that dual eligibility. Um, yes. yeah, Vasilevsky too high in this situation, but I understand it. Shesterkin next off the board had to be done. Yeah. And you know what? I don't know. I think Vasilevsky, Shesterkin six and seven is a little high. Kucherov next. I, th I would have rather taken Kucherov than any of those two goalies, uh, at six and seven, but Hey, huh, I'm not the one drafting them. Uh, yeah, definitely interesting. 
We still got a couple more picks until we're back up. I did want to talk to you about something, Flip, because I was checking out Please. some of the comments. You know, I we we you and I both appreciate all the feedback and comments we get on our YouTube channel. Huge. Uh, from from our you know our listeners and everything, but there was someone I forget I forget the name of his YouTube channel, but he left a comment and he disagreed with my strategy of of drafting a player, uh, you know, sorry, a forward and a defenseman from the same team. Dis- yeah. Disagreed with that strategy completely fine with me you know everyone has their own opinion everyone has their own subjective strategy of how they, they they like to draft their fantasy team but one of the uh you know i'll get into that after i make this pick jonathan huberdo baby i've got me some jonathan huberdo baby let's go my first left winger in the draft jonathan huberdo yeah. but yeah he left a comment on the page on our youtube channel saying that he disagreed with the strategy which is completely fine but his reasoning for it was really really shocking to me and mm. he suggests he's a guy like you should you should really look to stay away from drafting players on the same team, you know, trying to pair up a defenseman and a forward because if they play on this, you know, if they only have two to three games that week, you're gonna lose that week because they're not playing as much. And I'm like, hey man, like I Hot see where take. you're coming from. I, I, I don't see know where you're coming about from, that. but like, yeah, I don't know about it either. I, I see where he's coming from, but man, you're talking about two out of 21 players on your fantasy team. Like, mm. just because they might only have a two to three game schedule that week doesn't mean the rest of your fantasy team is going to be out, you know, out of the woods or anything like they've still got games going on. So I really thought that was kind of funny uh, to say that if you, it's almost, it's it's almost impossible though, to not have two players on the same team though, for your fantasy. Yeah. The logic there is a little bit flawed. Uh, Speaking of which, I hope my uh, pick right here isn't going to be flawed because it is a snake draft. I'm on the board back to back. I took Marit Sider. I'm going to go back to the forward bin and give me a beauty New York Ranger. Artemi Panarin. Ooh, I just pulled it under the gun. Just pulled the trigger. (laughs) I think the Rangers are going to be another good forward group. Um, They're going to put up a lot of goals. Uh, I have me McDavid. I have Panarin. And I also snatched Maurice Sider. Look, I want to talk about Maurice Sider again super quickly because we did talk about him the other day. He's going to get hits. He's going to get some penalty minutes. He shoots the puck. He can also score. I could see 50, 55 assists, maybe 60, 65 points. It's going to be a huge year for Maurice Sider. We can close the book on that conversation because I'm going to take him every time he's available. I just got him in the fifth round steal. I think that's an accurate location for him, maybe a bit early. But I like it, and I also love me some Artemi Panarin. I think you're coming up here in a second. Yeah, I actually just went, you know, to go along with Artemi Panarin. I just drafted Mika Zibanejad as my first centerman. But I, I completely agree with your with your take on the New York Rangers this upcoming season. You already know how I feel about them. I yep. think they're going to win the President's Trophy. I think they have a real shot at making it all the mm. way to the Stanley Cup Finals and winning the Stanley Cup this upcoming season. I have so much love for a lot of their players. Igor Shosturkin, Adam Fox. You mentioned it. Keandre Miller the other day as well. Zabinijad, uh, Artemi Panarin, uh, Alexi Lafreniere, who I'm really, Capo really Caco hoping could can still do step something. out of that shell. Capo Caco. There's a ton yeah. of players on the roster that I really like fantasy-wise as well. Thank so you very much. You've got Panarin. I've got Zabinijad. Mm. We've got the Ranger mm. boys. Uh, it is coming back up to me in five picks, it okay. looks like. But yeah, I've got one centerman, one left winger, one defenseman. This is around the spot where I look to take my first goalie. So let's actually go over to the goalie board over here. Because I, you know, besides Vasilevsky and uh, and Shesterkin, I haven't seen any goal other goaltenders taken off the board yet. And yeah, they're still they're still here. Markstrom, Saros, uh, Ottinger. Oh, you know what? Markstrom just got taken off the board, but Saros. Ottinger, Anderson, Flurry, Demko, Hellebuck, Frederick Anderson just got taken off the board. So, yeah, it looks like this is the time to take the goalies right now. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And I uh, am back on the board. Here we go. Hit me. What do you think? You know, I really like me some Saros. You see Saros, baby. You're I've sticking, taken hey, you're sticking yeah, with sticking it. It's the guns. right. Sorokin was also already off the board. Um, I also saw Sidney Crosby go very early uh, in this What was draft. he taken at? Crosby, I believe, went. Let me have a quick look here before I'm up. Uh, Crosby was yeah, he went ten. He went ten. That is a little early. I love talking about Sidney Crosby. I'm going to be up here back to back snake draft. Like I said, getting first overall or last overall is where I almost like to be with snake drafts. Getting two picks in a row. I know if you're at the back end of a 12 man draft, 12 person draft, 
that can be tricky, but I love taking back to back. Speaking of which I am on the board. I have one D man. I have a left winger. I have a center and I do not have a goalie yet. I need to address that. That is for sure because we know my battle with goalies <laughs> and how much I've talked about Jake Ottinger. I didn't take him in my other draft. I'm taking Jake Ottinger. Are you sh- hey, are you sure you don't want to take Carter Hart real quick? I am so <laughs> sure. Thank you so much. I have enough uh, difficulties in my life. I don't need to go back down that rabbit hole of poison. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am going to the right wing position because I like balancing out my team. I like trying to take a little bit of little bit of everywhere. I think another big year is upcoming for some of these St. Louis Blues, including Val- Vladimir Tarasenko. Wow, that might be a little high, Flip. That might be a little high. What was he ranked at on this list? I, d- I didn't see his he, name. Out of the last remaining right wingers, it was Mark Stone, Patrick Kane, then him, Claude Giroux, Nikolai okay. Ehlers, Kevin Fiala. I think I could see another 30-plus goal season from Tarasenko easily. Last year, 34 goals, 48 yeah. assists, 230 shots on goal. He actually has 83 hits. He can throw the body around a little bit. Maybe you should know take what we did? On that yeah. Game. You know what we did talk about? It's your pick, though, please. Yeah, we did talk about some options, though. You know, they might be 10 spots down from what, you know, the best available player is, but he fits the mold of your fantasy team. So, you know what? I'll stick with that. I'm looking. You know, I haven't got a right winger yet. I was looking at Sveshnikov, but he's gone. I got to go with a guy who I've talked about recently a lot, Jack Eichel. I think he's going to have an outstanding season. I think he's going to be fully healthy, and we can spec pure talent from Jack Eichel again. I think it's just the setup. He's finally now back to, you know, quote unquote, hockey life normal. The Vegas Golden Knights were dealt a seriously whack hand last year from injuries to COVID to otherwise. I think this season, unfortunately, they start off not even at camp yet. Hey, rookie camps are open, baby. Training camps are around the corner. (laughs) Stay tuned for more amazing content from your boys here on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, review. If you're feeling it or not, let us know. We appreciate that stuff. But still, there is a lot to get to over these next couple of weeks. And I'm just, you know, downright excited because I'm ready to drop the puck on this season. Me too, man. You know what? We got like just uh, just under a month away from the puck drop. Uh, I've still got a couple of more. I think I've got two or three more fantasy drafts to be to be a part of as well. I've already got one wrapped up back you know back right after the Colorado Avalanche won the Stanley Cup pretty much but I've got two or three more fantasy leagues that I'm a part of that I've got the drafts coming up this weekend so I'm getting prepared this mock draft right now is helping me get prepared for my future real mock draft or my future uh fantasy drafts as well for the upcoming season so I'm glad that we're doing 2.0 mock draft right now this is I'm really excited for the season flip Yeah, same breakdown, same statistical categories, just looking, and it is head-to-head, just looking at it from the different drafting positions. Obviously, here, I'm going a little bit more offensively loaded to start my team. I went it a little bit differently last time, went D and goalie first. Sometimes the draft pick that you're slotted in at precipitates how you have to draft your team. You can't leave some of these guys on the board. I know Tarasenko was a bit early, but I do think the St. Louis Blues are just one of those units that's just steady and they're going to have a good season. So I'll take Tarasenko. You're on the board, my friend. Let me know. And then we got to go to break because we haven't even done that yet. And I got to talk about bet online and all kinds of fun things. Yeah. You know what? I haven't, I haven't picked a right winger yet. So again, I'm looking at William, William Nylander, uh, mm-hmm. Nikolai Ehlers, maybe Drake Batherson as well. I think I've got to go Love with that. William Nylander. There's just too much talent that he's surrounded by as well. Fair. Fair. Okay. I'm going to fire off my two picks. I'm probably going to go D and goalie just because that's how I'm feeling. The rest of this draft is going to shake out. Some of these D names are also getting slightly thin on the elite side, but there are a lot of options in that second tier, which is where I'm going to go. You know what? I could probably wait. I could probably wait for a couple of the names that I want to get. So I'm going to actually go forward and then a goalie and wait. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit online on net. So get ready for that. <laughs> I think I'm going the opposite direction. I think I have to go with the defenseman next. Cause I've got, look, I've got two centermen, two left wingers, you know, Nylander is, has got that dual, uh, position as well. Left winger and right winger. I've only got one defense and one goalie right now. So I think I've got to go goalie and defense next. 
I am taking a centerman. I'm taking a guy who I've talked a lot about and I absolutely Patterson. love. I took Drake Batherson on my other team. I'm going Josh Norris. Wow. And now I, and now I am going to go back to the cage. Um, some of these second tier goalies, third tier goalies now, even that I'm looking at, this can get a little dicey in here, Steele. And now it's almost to the point where, you know, you could continue to wait perhaps, but I'm going to take a guy that I think is just in for a good situation this year. And I'm going to roll the dice with Jonathan quick. Wow. Okay. You know, I'm actually shocked by both those picks. I thought for sure you were going Elias Pedersen because you've talked about him a lot. Uh, I have, you know, the I high have. value. You know what? I, I, yeah, I was surprised that you took Josh Norris, but still a great pick, uh, a great player to pick for your fantasy team. Jonathan Quick, I can see, I can see the potential there this upcoming season for him to have another, another good fantasy year for Jonathan Quick. Thank you very much. Something that you need to check out: BetOnline.net as your number one source for your pro and college football betting needs and sports this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including week two's games. I hope it goes better than week one because that was sketch. Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sports wagering info, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening right now. Bet Online, where the game starts. Flip, I just took Jack Campbell 65th overall. You know, he was the seventh. Yeah, he was the seventh best goalie, uh, you know, available right there. But I, I had to pick him over guys, you know, who, who was left on that list. You know, I had to pick him over Bobrovsky, Kemper, Hellebuck, Talbot. I, yes. I, I really feel comfortable with Jack Campbell because you talked about it. He's going to get a ton of wins with the Edmonton Oilers this year. You know, he might not have the best goals against average or save percentage, but he's going to get a ton of wins. And that's what I'm looking for right now in my second goaltender. Wins and shutouts, I could see. I think what I when I took John Quick, you know, when he is in there, he can – his statistics are usually sharp. It's just with him getting up there in age, you know, it was a bold pick. And to be honest, Steele, I don't know if I'm loving some of these picks that I made. Being And maybe that's one of the takeaways for this episode is being in the first draft position – comes with a lot of pressure. And yes. sometimes if you fumble that bag at the top of the draft, which I appear to maybe be doing here with my selections, <laughs> it can have a trickle down effect. And yeah. this is the point of this episode. This is the point of these mock drafts and all of this pre-draft preparation is so that you can hopefully avoid some of these mistakes, you know, because now looking at some of these goalies still on the board, I think I could have probably rolled the dice with Vili Huso. I could have maybe rolled the dice with maybe even Cam Talbot, Jeremy Swayman. There was other options out there. I just think good team, good goalie. I'm okay with quick, but he is going to split a lot of the time with Peterson. Yeah. And you know what? That's, that's always been one of the things for me is like every time I go into a fantasy league, I'm almost pretty much praying that I don't get the first overall pick. I don't like going mm. first. I think it's, it's hard. I think it's, there's too much pressure, and I it don't is. like the distance of the snake draft. You know, you pick first, then you have to mm. wait till 12, and then you go 13, and then you got to wait again. I yeah. think the best spot for me, you know, I'll make my pick here first. I'm going to go Rasmus Dahlin. I think he's going to have another okay. great season for the Buffalo Sabres. And okay. you and I talked about the Sabres as well. They're heading in the right direction with all the young talent they have. So I can Rasmus see 60 Dahlin, points with Dahlin. He gets yeah, power and, play and, assists. And, and, well. I need, and I needed a defenseman right now. I only had Kale McCarr, so I, I really like Rasmus Dahlin at this spot as well. Uh, you yeah. know, there's obviously a couple of forwards that, you know, I would have liked to select it in that position, but I needed, I needed another defenseman. But again, I, I really don't like going first overall. I really believe that the mm. best selection, the best spot to draft in is the fifth or sixth spot right in the middle of, yeah. you know, a 12, 13 team league. Yeah. Depending on how many are in there, I got two picks coming up here, Steel. And I think one of the other takeaways is if you do kind of fumble the bag, uh, you know, when dealing with the first overall pick, then you might want to just get a little bit spicier, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to go with my gut here. I'm taking a D-man because I only have one. I'm sticking with the young brigade. I'm going with a player that I think is going to have a big stepping out season in Evan Bouchard. Yeah, you know, that's definitely a possibility. Back on the I clock, this, baby. Yeah, and, and I think this is where we had him ranked anyways. Like, he's he's going to have a stepping stone. We are in the ninth round, yeah. Yeah, I think the ninth, tenth round is very reasonable for Evan Bouchard.
I hate to do this deal. You know what? I'm not going to do it because there was two players I was looking at next <laughs> in Drake Batherson and Cairo. I'm going to go with Cairo to switch things up because I also realize he's got that dual position eligibility. He's going to yeah. switch around. I know he's a natural center, but I think he plays better on the wing. And I think you're going to see that this year. I, I completely agree with that. I, I like the pick. I like the dual eligibility as well. I was actually looking at Drake Batherson, uh, mm. but you know, to your point, he doesn't have that dual eligibility. There's Tebow Teravainen. I've already got a couple of left wingers. You know, I think I'm just going to pull the trigger on Drake Batherson. I think he's going to have an outstanding season with Ottawa. Me too. Me too. We don't need to continue to talk about the same things because that's one of the problems at this stretch of the offseason, Steel, is we're getting close. We just need hockey to start because <laughs> we've tried to cover almost every angle for y'all out there. And I hope you've been listening in and enjoying it. Because Steele and I enjoy coming on here and doing this for y'all. And these mock drafts are fun, Steele. And I think I was saying before that usually my preparation was just old school research, digging into the trenches, websites that we've mentioned, even old school style reading magazines. These mock <laughs> drafts are very helpful. Yeah, they are very helpful. It gives you kind of a look. Yeah, it literally just gives you the rough the rough copy, the rough draft of how things might go. And like I said, yeah. things can change on the fly, on the fly very easily. You know, there's times where it takes people, you know, a minute to, to make their selection. Next thing you know, five picks in a row, snap of a finger. So things can go very, very quick or things can slow down a bit. But again, things can change on the fly. Uh, I am up right now. I think I got to go with another defenseman because I'm not, uh, you know, there's only a couple of, defenseman left that I really really like Noah mm. Dobson wow I did not expect that 13 goals and 39 assists oh that's his projected projection upcoming season yeah I gotta go to a guy who I had last year and who I really like on my fantasy team Tory Krug I think is very very mm. undervalued um you know 96th overall so yeah you know we're in the we're in the 10th round I think 10th and 11th round is the proper place to pick a guy like Tory Krug injury concerns are obviously a, a thing. ton of points if, yeah, are for sure. But when he's healthy, look, nine goal. What he had nine goals, thirty four assists last year. He's a plus twenty three, yeah. decent amount of power play points. I'd like to see the power play power play points up to 24, 25. But other than that, you know, other statistical categories, not the best, but not the worst as well. But I do like having a, uh, a Tory Krug on my team. And again, I like to I like to match Tory Krug with one of my guys of the St. Louis Blues. So hopefully, I can get a Robert Thomas as well. Or was he already drafted? Okay, I'm up on the clock. I had three seconds there. Sorry, Steele. I'm going with Owen, Owen Power. I'm continuing my age brigade on the blue line. Owen Power is going to get a lot of points this year. I don't think he's getting enough credit either. I like him for, uh, you know, a very good shot at the Calder this year. Cider, yeah. Bouchard, and Power on my blue line. I'm going to round out my blue line with a guy who I think is going to get a lot of points on an improved team in Dougie Hamilton. Wow, back to back defensemen. Yes, sir. Wow, who are your defensemen right now, Flip? I honestly, I, that's probably the strength of this team because I don't did, didn't do so well with with my goaltenders. But Maurice Sider, Evan Bouchard, Owen Power, and Dougie Hamilton, I think, are going to get me a ton of points this season. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty solid uh, defenseman lineup you got there, Flip. I, and I think those steel. Like let's be honest here, and let's be clear. These setups are very kind of advantageous. There is so much talent to pick from because if yes. you're in dynasty dynasty keeper leagues, all these players are not floating around. So it's so much fun to do these. You're on the clock, my friend. Let's hear it. I can't believe this guy is still available, Matt Duchesne. I need a right winger anyway. I need uh, a right winger as well. I like Matt Duchesne. I've been high on the Nashville Predators this upcoming season. I think he's going to have another season, another good season as well. Obviously not 43 goals, 43 assists again, but th he's projected for 34 goals, 38, 38 assists. He's going to get a ton of power play opportunity. Matt Duchesne, my second right. To I am really, really liking my, uh, my, my mock draft fantasy team right now, Flip. I know you are, and I'm liking yours too. And I think, like I said uh, about maybe getting a little spicier with the picks, if you didn't think it went to your draft went to plan, I talked a little bit a couple of months ago how I think Brock Besser had a bad situation last year. I think yeah. I just auto-drafted, didn't I? No, I don't even think you were up. Oh, weird. Did you just pick someone? No, no, no. You weren't even up. You weren't even oh, up. Oh, thank goodness. Well, I hope Brock Besser doesn't get taken because that's <laughs> where I want to go. But, you know, he talked about his dad dying. He talked about yeah. the mental health. He got injured. 
I actually really like Brock Besser's game. I think he is a straight sniper, and I love his shot. I think he's in the mix with some good players in Vancouver. You know I like to you know hammer that angle. It's a little bit of a bolder play, but like I said with this draft, I think that's the way I'm going. And you and I only have one pick left here to fill out our rosters. I don't think we need to do the bench, uh, bench side of things, do we? Up to you, Flip. Uh, I'm down either way. I, you know, I like filling out the 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 bench spots as well because that gives you know the okay. listeners a little bit let's more of a yeah. Let's finish it off. We yeah, got yeah, five picks left each. There are four bench slots, so that's where we're at. You got players left. I'm taking. Are you next up, Steel? Where are you looking positional wise? You are next up. I think I'm looking for my third goaltender here. I I really like having three goaltenders to you know cycle in and out every single week. I think it's the smart decision to have three goaltenders because you never know again with the injuries. And look, this is perfect. You know, there's Spencer Knight, there's Talbot, there's Huso. There's not much left options out here for me. And I think Cam Talbot is going to be the starting goaltender for the Ottawa Senators. So I I really like my team right now. I have three starting goaltenders who I think are going to get a ton of wins in UC Soros, Jack Campbell, uh, Jack Campbell, and Cam Talbot. So I really like my goaltenders right now. And at this point, with four bench spots, I do have my right wing slot open. But you're going to want to take a look at how many of those, we've said this before, is how many 50-50 splits potentially there could be. So having a secondary option that might end up being the guy who eats a lot of more starts could be one of those tipping point factors for you winning or losing your your season. Because, hey, let's say I take a shot on a guy like Pavel Fransuz, and he ends up taking the lion's share of the starts. That could be huge. Vili Husso, Nedeljkovic, same kind of setup. I actually think Husso might get more of the chance to be the number yeah, one. Yeah, I think so, so I'm going to go with Husso. I'm going to follow your strategy there. And then I still need a right winger, which is where I'm going to finish here. Matt Zuccarello is going to get a ton of assists. I know he was yeah. been dealing with injury at the end of last season a little bit. Maybe also off-season issues, but I'm going to take Matt Zuccarello because I also love the fact that he brings all of those assist category stats. He is going to be great. I do want to say it. I am pretty shocked that Robert Thomas and Jack Hughes fell all the way to 118th and 119th. Uh, You know, for me, I didn't take those two guys just because I already had my two centermen picked out, which are uh, Mika Zabinijad and Jack Eichel. I could have taken them, but... For my centerman, I'm I'm pretty happy with those two guys. I'm really surprised that Hughes and, and Thomas fell all the way to the what thirteenth round it is. Mm. Uh we are now in the thirteenth round. Yes. I just took Vili Husso in the thirteenth round, first pick of the thirteenth thirteenth round. Yeah, of the draft. I, I was I was really, really hoping that those two th- that those two guys continue to fall to this pick that I have right now, because that's who I was gonna make the selection at. But you know, now that I have this selection, I have Rasmus Dalin on the line. Tage Thompson just got that huge contract. He's going to be a great bold. player to look for as well. Bold. Tage Thompson. I don't think that's bold whatsoever. We're in the 13th round right now. We're that's true. I'm round. just, I don't see the projections for 32 goals. I just don't see it. No sample size with Tage oh, Thompson. Oh, I don't think he, hey, I don't think he's going to put up 32 goals again, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts up 30. Uh, you know, 20 puts up 32, mm. 34 assists. I think he's, I think I'll, I'll are say this. Have some I this say year. 25 goals are under for Tage Thompson. I just, I don't know. I'm not buying it steel. And I'm not saying it's an awful pick because he's still going to bring fantasy value. And you're yeah. right. This is the back end of the draft. And if it means you're slotting a guy in that can still score, I'm going to say for him, he's topping out at around 23 goals this year. That's what I see for him. I hope I eat my words for your team's sake if this uh, ends up going into anywhere other than the mock draft and you do take him somewhere else. But we'll see. Hey, I can't like all your picks. You know what I'm saying? And with three bench slots left here, I like trying to cover a little bit of my bases, right? I'm probably going to take one D-man, so I have a spare D-man, and I'm probably going to take some forwards as well. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, you know what? I, I have a guy. You can probably see him on my screen. He's in my queue right now. I'm saving him for later in the draft. I'm going to take a shot on him. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I've talked about this guy a lot. I think he's going to be a huge piece for the Florida Panthers and Gustav Forsling. That mm. is going to round out my defensive group right there. For those who are not watching and they're listening, who was the player, is the player you have in your key. So I won't take him, though, just so people know. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll save that. I'll save that for when I hopefully pick him and hopefully Got he falls it. down. I'm to sticking that spot, to my guns but... with Brock Besser, by the way. I'm pulling the trigger on him. There's a lot of interesting names here left, Steele. 
Brock Nelson, Clayton Keller, Thomas Hurdle coming off of a big season, Ryan O'Reilly, Sam Bennett. Like, there are some interesting options here. I yeah, think there I are. need a backup D-man, though, so I'm going to go because D-mans are thin right now, this back end of the draft. And I'm going to take a gamble on Vince Dunn, who I think is in for a sneaky, underrated season wow. in Seattle. Wow. That is – that is uh... – I, you know what that is? That is very sneaky. That was very sneaky of you, Thank Flip. you. Thank you. Very sneaky indeed. You know, I've got Ooh, two Lucas picks Raymond, who could have, you know, was right at, wait, did he win the Calder? No, but he could have. No. And he was right there in the mix. And Lucas Raymond is going to have a big year. I know who won the Calder. Come on. Wake up, Flip. <laughs> wow. Okay. I honestly, I honestly don't You're even know. Board, who, your I, last I need, pick of the draft? I need another, I need. Shot in the dark, Troy Terry. I, I I couldn't I couldn't take another centerman. I have too many centermen on my team right now. I needed another right winger or left winger. I was hoping I was hoping to get Zach Hyman with that uh, dual eligibility he has on um, playing left. Yeah, right I like wing, that but, too. But yeah, I had to go with I had to go. Yeah, we're getting down to our last pick here, Flip. Uh, yeah. And and th- now I'm gonna take the guy I have in my queue. I think that is the right who, choice to go. Who is that? Jake Sanderson of the Ottawa Senators. You know I love uh, that. You yeah, know I love I, that. I had to, I had to, you know, we've talked a lot about the Senators. We talked a little bit about Jake Sanderson and the potential he has moving his way up from this, you know, the bottom pairing up to the maybe the second or first pairing with Thomas Shabbat potentially. Yeah, yeah. I think he's gonna get that opportunity. I just have this weird feeling that he's gonna get that opportunity to uh, power play time, penalty kill time, and hopefully prove himself to the Ottawa Senators organization that he was the right pick. Your pick, final pick is coming up, and then I will quickly wrap this bad boy up. There are some interesting names still left on this board, including, man, oh, is oh Nick Suzuki still there? Interesting name. Matty Beignet's interesting name. Um, there are some very intriguing talents on the top of this board still left here, Steele. And that's what happens when you're in these kinds yeah. of drafts that aren't keeper. There's going to be so many great options. Yeah. At this point, you're really going to have to get lucky. Look, Nico Heischer, Michael Bunting, Jakob Vrana, Taylor Hall. Uh, we can keep yep. going down this list, but there's a ton of guys. You know, I probably should pick Jacob Chikrin, but I, again, I'm going to take a shot in the dark here. Jake Sanderson, that is my last player for my fantasy team. We've, you know, I like taking a shot with the last couple of picks. And my last one, I just mentioned a player. I'd like to have a backup center. Um, because Josh Norris came off an injury last year, and we know McDavid can have injuries. I'm going to finish off with Matty Beignets. I really do think yeah. there that kid proved in a very small sample size. I think he had 10 points in nine games to round out last season. He is going to get a very good look in Seattle. I hope you've had a very good look at another good mock draft with yours truly on today's episode. Thank you so much for being here. Steel, take us away, brother. Real quick, before we wrap it up, though, let's let everyone out there know who's listening and can't see the visuals right now, okay. who we drafted for the mock draft. So I'll list them off real quick for my for my fantasy team or my mock draft fantasy team. My two centermen, Mika Zabinajad and Jack Eichel. My two left wingers, Jonathan Huberdeau, William Nylander. Right wingers, Drake Batherson and Matt Duchesne. My defensemen, Kale McCarr, Rasmus Dahlin, Tori Krug, Gustav Forsling. My goalies, UC Saros, mm. Jack Campbell, uh, yeah, Jack Campbell, Cam Talbot, and my bench players, Tage Thompson, Troy Terry, and Jake Sanderson. Flip, mm. I really like my fantasy team right here. I, this, you know, yeah. this was a, if this was a true draft, I really yeah. like this. Yeah, your your demon could blow up in your face. I don't know if I'm poking <laughs> one hole. You know, if I have to chirp you one way, I'll go there. And Tage Thompson, I'm worried about, but you do have a solid squad there. I got at my center position, Connor McDavid, Josh Norris, not bad. Left wingers are Temi Panarin, Jordan Cairo, not bad. Right wingers are maybe where I have some risk, Tarasenko and Zuccarello. And then on the blue line, I have some unproven's in Owen Power and Evan Bouchard, but the upside is massive. And I'm fine with mitigating that risk with Maurice Sider and Dougie Hamilton. In net is probably my biggest concern in terms of the Dallas Stars are not going to get a lot of wins this year. Potentially Jake Ottinger, John Quick splitting a lot of time with Cal Peterson. That's a concern for the goaltenders. But I like my bench. Vili Husso, Brock Besser, Vince Dunn, and Matty Beignets. My team is either going to finish in second or first or second last or last. <laughs> that's what it get. That's what it – hey, you mentioned, though, pressure on with the first overall yeah. pick. That can happen, Steele. What else can happen, though? 
We will be back on Monday. We have big time guests coming up. We have Justin Cuthbert, senior writer, Yahoo Sports. We have the host of the biggest sports show on the radio in Canada, Sportsnet, the Fan 590s, Ailish Forfar will be here next week as well, joining us. So make sure you are tapped and tuned in because we have some fire content and some big time guests coming up for all of our listeners out there. Yeah, we are super, super excited for the next couple of weeks, weeks with all of our special guests coming on. Flip, thank you so much for this second 2.0 mock draft. Thank everyone out there as well for tuning in for today's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Make sure you hit the subscribe and the follow button. We appreciate it very, very much. Everyone out there, please enjoy your weekend, and we shall see you back here again on Monday. Peace.